Yo, I want to share with you a quick motivational piece of information that really helped my life and my business, and hopefully this will serve you. Uh, and if I can narrow down one thing specifically, it's do not let... Now, as soon as I say, say what I'm going to say, don't just think that, like, I'm asking you that you got it and click off. Hear, hear me out what I'm going to say. This is very powerful. Don't let the notion of failure even in your mind. This is not some gener general motivational bullcrap. This is real. I've had a lot of, uh, gone through depression, um, um, uh, discouragement, feelings of failure, feeling hopeless, worthlessness, unworthy. And I've looked in the mirror and, and had fear fill up inside of me before in the past. In the past. And I, and I would feel like, oh my God, what if this is not going to work out at all? What if it's going to fail? What if it's... And, and what happens is when you think thoughts like that or you allow yourself to think thoughts like that, it, it, the spirit of discouragement comes upon you and it, it, it pulls you into a really dark place. It's very bleak. And it's um, it's terrifying, actually, because because <laughs> I mean that that like that feeling that what if you're not good enough or you're not cut out for this like and time and time again I look around at other people they're not more gifted some people are more intelligent some people have like they can pick up on things faster and maybe you have to work a little bit harder but most of the people that I see that have become very successful. They have, if you read on Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, a white-hot desire. They're extremely focused. There are tools, tips, strategies, other people, software, principles, things that you can tap into that give you an unfair advantage that allow you to become successful. So, and my friend like Joshua Latimer said, there's a lot of people out there that are a hell of a lot dumber than you that have figured out how to get what they want. You can do it too. So if you let yourself feel like you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not, and you let this feeling overcome you, it'll just suck you right down to the bottom. So here was my big epiphany when I said, do not let the notion of failure even come into your mind at all. Here's why. I'm sitting here at the vet, my Mickey boy, and Gracie, <laughs> my little dog Gino has a heart issue, so he drove like two hours and he's getting an echocardiogram to make sure his heart's okay. And I, I want to make this video for you. So if you if you let the notion of failure into your mind, then you have almost no chance of making it, right? So if everything is depending on you, and if you if you want something to work, you got to work it, you have no chance if you think it's going to fail or you let that in your mind. Does this make sense? You have no chance because you're already thinking it's going to fail. Even if you don't have a good chance of succeeding or you have a small chance of succeeding you at least have a better chance of succeeding by thinking what if it does work how am I going to make this work uh, if you read the book who not how by Dan Sullivan the strategic coach he talks about you know stop saying how am I going to do this how do I do this and start saying who can do this who can help me do this who can I hire or learn from or get coaching or mentorship from who can help me figure out how to get my pricing strategy down build my website um, like for instance if you suck at building websites maybe you're really good at like landscaping or doing tree work or doing garden beds and you're good with your hands but for some reason when you sit down to do your marketing or you sit down to build your website you just go blank and you freak out and get anxiety and you just can't do it. Like the neurology in your brain actually hasn't wired all of the, the mechanisms. The mechanisms. To, 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 you have not developed that skill yet. So it's going to be really, really hard and, and feel almost impossible to do things that you haven't even, you haven't done. And if you're pressed for time, even more so, right? You can't, it's hard to be a jack of all trades. So who can you find that can walk you through that thing, building your website or getting a sales system down, right? What what distractions can you eliminate? Because I tell you, five years are going to go by, and if you don't figure this stuff out, you're going to be in the same spot in five years. So the anxiety and the pressure is good because it's telling you, um, you know, what to lean into. And so so some of the most successful people I know are people that have. They have a hell-bent determination and willpower, and they figure it out as they go. They have faith. 
in themselves. So if you look at this gradient of like, here's the known and here's the unknown. If you're going into the unknown all the time and you're learning stuff that you don't know, at some point you have to put one foot in front of the other and take action on things that you don't know. And don't be afraid to throw mud at the wall and see what sticks. There's two different types of decisions. There's reversible decisions and there's irreversible decisions. Here's what I mean. If you go take a chance and a leap and a risk on something that's an irreversible decision, like let's go say you sign a loan on a $70,000 truck or a $50,000 piece of equipment or a $500,000 home or you go sign up to be in debt for something without very carefully crunching all the math and the numbers and figuring out how you're, you're what is your uh, how comfort are you, uh, comfortable are you with taking on debt something like or you make an irreversible decision like um, asking someone to marry you right don't you want to make sure that you want to spend the rest of your life with that person for real like don't make impulsive decisions but there are so many other decisions that are reversible decisions, right? If you attempt to go build your website and you suck at it and you spend eight hours and it doesn't work and then it's a small failure. Like, of course it sucked. You have to go hire somebody to do it. Or if you, hey, shh, it's okay. Like there's a lot of other decisions that you can actually go and take a chance on that if you mess it up or if it doesn't work, nobody cares. It's not even the end of the world. So be very clear of what type of decisions you are making. And you can gain a lot of a uh, headroom and take a lot of advantage. My dog will do this thing where he'll, it's like this nesting thing. He'll scratch. He's okay. All right. So I'm obsessed with this. Oh, I got to do a plug real quick. Um, um, if you need a software to run your business, I've been using Jobber for over three and a half years. I love it. I literally can't imagine running my business without it. You can do billing, invoicing. You can take care of customers and clients. You can message them and notify them. You can have them sign, collect deposits with Jobber payments. You can collect money automatically. It helps systematize and automate the entire customer relationship management and communication side of your business. You can create proposals. You can do like, it's just amazing. And you can run it from your phone, your tablet, your computer. You can hook up people in your office. Or if you've got employees, you can get them going on it. So then they can run Jobber and see the job descriptions. It just does all types of amazing stuff. So it's an amazing billing tracking software. Go to getjobber.com slash Keith. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get a free trial. If you decide to sign up with my link, you save a whole bunch of money. Getjobber.com slash Keith. Try it out. It's totally free. And then once you get using it and learn how to use it, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, why didn't I do this before? So it's awesome. All right, so back to what I was saying. If you catch yourself thinking a negative thought, uh, grab that thought and just don't tolerate it from yourself. Don't let yourself think about failure. Um, now, if you're uh, if you're if you're ignorant and totally uh, purposely being blind to something like you're about to do something that is a stupid idea and it's for sure gonna fail or it's really dumb, then of course you don't want to do that thing. Be like, hey, that thing's probably gonna fail. I don't want to do that. That's stupid. Maybe I should go, you know, not bite off more than I could chew. But you get what I'm saying here. Like, um, yeah. I wish I could just take this that feeling and transfer it. Um, so I was, I, I get these epiphanies when I'm like brushing my teeth, I'll be like brushing my teeth and I look in the mirror <laughs> and, and if a negative thought comes through my mind, like, oh my God, like the fear of total failure. What if none of this is going to work at all? I go, uh, uh, screw that. Cause it's, cause like, it's not going to get you anywhere and talking about that with other people, nobody can help you when you're in that position. One of my see, friends, uh, Chris Sobel, he's, he's been in some of my videos He's a tree guy. He's got a big bucket truck and he bought that robotic crane thing. And he's so obsessed with tree work and serious about his business. And he's taken to the next level. Chris has this attitude about him where like, I'll be on the phone with him and he'll be talking about his next big goal. He's like, Oh bro, I ain't even playing. Well, you think I'm playing right now? I like, I'm like, what are we getting in a fight here? Like, is you see so serious He's like, oh, I need to just watch. You see what's about to happen, and then you'll see I ain't playing. Like he ain't this. He ain't playing. He's dead. <laughs> he's dead serious, and he's a hundred percent focused on one thing: is growing his tree business. And he's like, 
has almost a, I wouldn't say a maniacal or sociopathic belief in himself. That'd be more, more like a Conor McGregor type. Has I remember Joe Rogan one time said that he was talking about when he was, um, Conor McGregor was fighting uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, gearing up for the fight. And Joe Rogan said something interesting. He said, it's crazy. Like, Conor McGregor has this almost sociopathic belief in himself. Like, he believes in himself so much that... So, take that metaphor. And I was on the phone again with my friend Joshua Latimer, and he said this epiphany. He goes, some people that believe in themselves so much that aren't even necessarily good people. They're bulldozers. They push people over. They're sometimes narcissistic a lot of times in the world that we live in, those are the people, not saying you should ever do this because you shouldn't, but those are the people that oddly get what they want. Those are the people that build really successful businesses and do all these things. Now, there's a ceiling to that because if you don't treat people good, you're going to have some problems, right? Because integrity is everything. But but it's because most people by nature, um, I don't know if most, but a lot of people by nature are, are meek or quiet or pushovers if somebody's pushing their will and they just kind of like get run over right so it's be careful of the people that you look up to that are highly successful because they might let you down like if you actually got to meet them in person or you really really knew about how some of them are so just because somebody's extremely successful doesn't always mean that they're a great person they might just be bullies and when you're a bully and you tell yourself this through, this through the psycho-cybernetic feedback loop, you tell yourself that you're such a successful person because you're such a great guy because you get what you want and you don't take no for an answer and you, you push people around and you're all about your agenda and getting things done. Like that can actually get you really far in life. But at some point when you have people calling you an asshole and not wanting to work for you, quitting, bad-mouthing you behind your back because you're such a bully... Um, that's not success at all either. That's just being a bully. And so um, I, I think about this stuff and I think about the dichotomies. I think about gradients and I think about what is real success. Because I tell you one thing, when you're broke, money is everything. The pain of not having money is so painful that you will just like work a hundred hours a week to figure out how to get it to get rid of money pain. And then when you get some money, you start thinking about like, like me, I'm trying to make up for lost time. I've spent a decade working just constantly to get financially established, get my house in order, get some money in the bank, get great credit, get all the debt paid off. And, and now I have, you know, consecutive date nights with my wife and I'm spending more family time. I'm spending more time, you know, just sitting in the sun, reading my favorite books and I'm still a workaholic, but it's like, um, there's this pain inside of me, uh, that I'm alleviating by taking me time. I've been working out, make, sleeping in, um, uh, going jogging in the park. Just simple stuff that that's stuff that I haven't gotten to do since I was like, you know, 21, 22 years old. I used to go running in the, I love go running in the park and do push-ups and calisthenics. And, and at some point I got to this point where I was like, well, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If it don't make dollars, I can't go running in the park. I can't work out. Well, I'll get a workout by doing landscaping, landscaping. And it's a, there's a different feeling than you going to the gym and working out or going for a jog and getting fresh air and letting all your thoughts and ruminating and letting go of things and having these great epiphanies that get your life to the next level when you don't have the pressure of like, I have to hurry up and get this job done so I can talk to this customer. So I can do blah, 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 like, and, um, yeah, now I'm just talking <laughs> a lot. I'm really excited. I'm coming out with this new program right now. I'm working on, uh, keithkelfas.com slash 16. It's the 16 documents that you need when hiring any employee that they must sign. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get access to all these documents and you can download them. Uh, it costs me, I'm, actually, I'm charging for it because it costs me a lot of time and energy and money to make sure all these documents are totally proprietary and unique to what I use in my business. They're not just some random stuff I pulled off the internet. And you can actually download them all, print them out, and actually use them in your own business right away. Uh, KeithKelfas.com slash 16. When you go to it, you can click and then you can get access to the documents. And I've also included, it's also an online course where I do interviews and you can learn all about how to protect your business. I'm not like an attorney or anything like that. 
just my own opinion, but it's uh, really powerful stuff that I've learned that I resisted for a long time in my business was, was just putting basic structure systems and policies into the business. So if that, if you're in that same spot as me, or excuse me, as I was, you're going to love this because it's really, really good stuff. And I'll put a link below. Anyways, uh, don't let the thoughts of failure come into your mind. If you want to do something, write it down, create a plan and go take some action on it right away. Let's say this spring you want to do a whole core aerating and power raking thing. You're like, oh, I want to get an aerator machine. The thing that puts little plugs in the lawn. And let's market it to a bunch of customers for like, I don't know, 150 bucks a piece. And then let's line up like 100 customers to do it. What's that? 15 grand? 100 times 150? And then we could we could have a whole bunch of extra revenue. What if we did a power rake or like a... I don't know if you do fertilizer, you probably have to get a license for that. That's why I don't mess with fertilizer. But think about these different fun things that you can do and services you can offer or services you can eliminate. There's so many ways to make money. What if you created like a whole script, like a system of how to take care of customers and then you maybe you hired somebody to start answering the phones for you. And you, was like, and you were like, you know what? I'm gonna hire someone, but only at like part, part time, 15 hours a week and see. Maybe it could take a bunch of stress off you and that person can book a bunch of jobs and start taking care of customers that'll alleviate you to go sell higher end work or bigger projects, right? It's about who, not how. All right, anyways, I'm all fired up now. Uh, I think I'm gonna turn this into an episode on my Untrapped podcast with Keith Kelfus. We just crossed like 700,000 downloads on Apple and Spotify, the Untrapped podcast with Keith Kelfus. So if you don't wanna like listen to these long videos of mine, these truck talks, you can you can listen on the podcast while working too. All right, cool, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button uh, and you get notified. And if you like uh, window cleaning content, I have an entire channel all about window cleaning. It's called the window, the window cleaning blueprint. Some people ask me like, do you still clean windows? Yes, the window cleaning blueprint. And if you like the deep dive um, stuff where I talk about like psychology and Jesus and um, all types of other stuff and crazy stuff that it's not really like popular to talk about here because I'm into like neuroscience and consciousness and obsessed with personal development. I have a whole nother YouTube channel called I Am Ability. I am ability. And we talk about that stuff there. All right, later.